In this exercise, we're going to be taking a look at how to generate a web banner with this Adobe Illustrator file. I pretty much configured everything the way I wanted the layout to look so that it'll work and animate, but there's still some changes that I need to make. So before I go into that, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what I did. Uh, this book uh, by Kurt Vonnegut is a short story that deals with the future and sometime in the future they discover that dandelions is a secret ingredient to allowing you to live forever pretty much unless you get hit by a car or something but because of that the population just goes through the roof so I started off thinking I wanted to reference the dandelion and then I tried generating a skyline and I thought this was starting to move towards the right direction. Uh, the title of the book, uh, The Big Trip Up Yonder, is euphemism for dying. And so the idea is that you're going to go to heaven. And that's why I have the clouds in here so that they look kind of heavenly like. And uh, in the future, people literally are living on top of each other. And uh, it's a story about a little old man who pretty much has his whole family living with him. But uh, it's a little on the, uh, shall we say, nihilistic side of storytelling. And uh, so I didn't want it to look too happy. So I, I generated another image. And the difference between this one and the last one, in this one, the prompt was to generate a vertical layout of apartment skyline, dense skylines. I can't remember specifically what the prompt was. But the second time I ran it, I told it not to include any vegetation. So it regenerated these buildings. I liked what it got me. And uh, I went into Photoshop and I was able to take advantage of the new beta option, which allowed me to add more information on the bottom and on the top. That way I could slide this image up and down on my banner because I was thinking I might want to fix this uh, vanishing point over here with the titling to have everything kind of draw to the center where the author's name is. So that's essentially what I did, but it, it, it turned out not to be that effective, uh, but just the same, it's still the, hor the horizontal line still lined up where I wanted it. So clearly I'm stacking the text, I'm st stacking the apartments, the idea that it's referencing moving up, there's a conceptual understanding as to why the layout is set up that way. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut and his name uh, is stacked over here as the apartments are getting stacked. The reference to this mark in here is the original letter from the Gutenberg Bible, the letter G for Gutenberg. And clearly I selected the typeface because it was more of a vertical uh, format that matched the larger concept of the, of the layout and the banner. So the idea of the animation is going to be, be fairly simple. I want all of this just to fade in. So when the image loads up, we'll see the image in its, in its uh, full view and the mark for the Gutenberg uh, project. And then this is just going to fade in. And then that'll be the end of the animation. The, uh, right now, this is currently set up. This is all text. And uh, I got the layout that I wanted. And now I need to make some changes so that I don't get any errors in animate when I make this into an animated banner. So the first thing I want to do is I want to select all my text and make it into an outline. And most all the text is in this layer, but it, this layer also includes the, uh, the uh, button artwork over here. So I'm going to hold the shift key down and turn that off so I don't select that with, it, with uh, the text. Now I'm going to go to the type drop down menu and I'm going to slide down to uh, convert create outline rather. Now this does have a shadow effect. It's still there, but in order for me to be able to use it in animate, I have to extract it from the text. It can't come in as this kind of grouped uh, shadow and text combination. So I need to go to the object drop down menu and slide down to expand and that generates the artwork for the separate artwork for all the shadows of the text. So let me click over here and I'm going to pop the first one over, open over here and if I hide the shadow, that's this image right underneath here, you can see that the shadows disappear. Here's the one for the author's name. I'll hide that shadow so you can see it disappear from the background. 
So that's important to have. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to get the right looking shadow. And uh, it, it can fade in. Everything can move into as one giant movie clip and fade in without any problem. The uh, background image uh, was a little too bright, so I added a gradation. And the gradation is just on top of the image. And it was too bright in relationship to how the text was showing up, as well as just the, the mood of the larger image. So it's actually a gradation that goes from black to black. But uh, the black on top is transparent, so it fades away. So it get a little bit more white out of the clouds up on top. And everything just kind of gets darker as it gets lower. OK, so uh, now the next thing I want to do is I want to do a Save As. And I'm going to do a Save As. And I want to include, in the name of my project, uh, this is going to be called Vector. And the idea is that uh, this is not going to include any of the type work or whatever. So the, the file that I did previously is kind of like the uh, source art or the, the code, if you will. And uh, the vector is just going to be line art. So if I need to modify the image, I'm going to have to go back to the original non-vector artwork, make my changes there, make that into another vector, and bring that into animate. And uh, one more thing, uh, when you save, when you bring in your original artwork, and you're going to bring in and place your artwork as part of the document, I, I'm going to recommend that you click on this option in here, which says Include Linked in fi or Linked Files. And the reason for that is then you don't have to worry about leaving the uh, PNG file uh, on another in another folder or another location. Wherever you move the Illustrator file, it'll be embedded with that file. It does make a the file a little bit bigger, but that's not going to affect the Animate file because uh, we're not going to upload the Illustrator file at all. The reason why this isn't an option right now is because when I brought the original file, it was embedded. I embedded it when I saved it the first time. And if you want to include a, a, a profile, you can. This is set up for sRGB. That's what was set up in the Adobe Illustrator file. And that's really the uh, only changes that I would uh, consider having. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And so it saved that to my file. So I'm ready to go into Animate. And from here, I'm going to do a new file. And it doesn't matter what the dimensions are here. This is It's supposed to be 300 by 600. This is wrong. Uh, but what is more important than the dimensions and the frame rate is that you're in HTML5 canvas. So I'll just leave it at the wrong setting there. And here's what you want to do. Either do a Command R or Control R if you're on a PC, or go to the File drop-down menu and slide down Import to Stage. There's your Command R. And we're going to go find the vector file. Open that up. And we want to make sure that we're in separate layers. Otherwise, it can cram everything into a single layer. Make sure that that's not set up that way. We want to include the size, the dimensions of the Illustrator file. And that's pretty much it. Everything's good to go. So these two options, the top and the bottom one, make sure that you're in Animate Layers, and we'll do Import. OK, so let's see what we have. We'll do a Command Return. And there's our file. It's not centering. We need to center it. So Let's close that. And uh, what we want to do is go into the Canvas page and select this text over here to center it. We don't need the stop. We just need the reference to a const root, a constant reference. We don't even need that, really. But we might as well take it. We could use it eventually if we expand our code later. So we we'll go ahead and do a Command-C for copy. Come back over here to animate. We're going to add a brand new layer. We're going to call it Actions. I'm going to do a right click, or you can do an F9, call up Actions. And we're going to paste our code there. We'll close that for now. And let me command zero that out. Command return. And so there it comes nice and centered. 
And uh, I'm actually done in Illustrator, so I can quit out of here. Okay, so everything's looking the way I want it to, except it's not animating. So let's set that up. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is to animate the one layer. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to click on the animation layer. We're going to go to the insert drop down menu and create a simple classic tween. We'll hit OK. It wants to uh, give us a name for the movie clip that we're about to create, and it's also going to modify our timeline. And we need a keyframe at the end, but we also need the background in the end. So I'll put the background in first. So I'll click on this very last frame here. Uh, either do a right click and select just a regular keyframe, insert uh, frame rather, not keyframe. And the shortcut key for that is F5. You may have to use the FN key if you're on a Mac, but I'll just click on this. Okay, so now I need a keyframe at the very end of the animation, so I'm going to do the shortcut key for a keyframe is F6, so I'm doing an F6. Now I'm going to go to the front of the animation, select my artwork, and while it's selected, I have the object settings over here. The color effect for this one's going to be alpha, and it's going to be zero, so it's going to animate, and it's just going to fade in. So the last thing I need is a stop over here. So I'm going to, well, actually, for this to work, I need a stop. So there I'm going to do another F6, insert keyframe, right click, go to my code snippets, and either call a stop from there or go straight to actions and just type in what we need, which is this period, stop, open and close parentheses, semicolon. And we're ready to give it a test. So here it comes. Okay, so that's that's it. That's the banner. We still have a few more things to do. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is maybe make the animation last a little bit longer. So I'm going to make the timeline last longer. I'm going to go for 60 frames. I'm going to do an F5. And I'm going to click on this layer and I'm going to drag it over here. And I'm going to click on this keyframe here, and I'm going to drag it so it sits a little bit longer before it starts to fade in. The stop also still needs to be at the very end of the animation, so I'm going to click that and drag that over there. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I might even wait a little bit longer. So let's come back over here. I mean, wait a little longer before it shows up, so we'll give it that long and gives people a chance to kind of settle in on it and maybe notice some motion to make it attracting to them. Okay, so now I need to add a button that's going to take me to my URL. And so here I'm going to add a new layer. And in that first uh, box, everything's going to take place here in the first box. I'm going to create a rectangle and uh, hold the Option key down. And the dimensions are going to be the same size as my banner, which is 300 by 600. Hit OK. And whenever I do things like invisible buttons or that type of thing, I usually like to make it green. It's just a habit. That way I know that I typically don't use the color green for anything. OK, so then I want to, while well, I've got it, I'm going to reposition it. So uh, actually, I'll make it into a button first. So I'll go to the Modify drop-down menu, slide down to Convert to Symbol, or do an F8. And we want it to be a button. And I'll go ahead and call it uh, Button. Nothing original there. I will capitalize it, though. Uh, that looks good. Hit OK. And now I'll select the button. And while the button's selected, I can come back over here and zero its position. So I'm hitting a tab key and zero. And oh, it's not centering. It is centering. It's centering off the center. That's OK. I need it to block right in that spot. So it, it locks fine. OK, so now I'm going to program this. I'm going to go to the Windows drop-down menu, slide down to the code snippets. I've got uh, the HTML5 canvas. Make sure you select that. And I'm going to go to the uh, actions, 
and I want to click to go to web page and it's going to create a button, a button name, take that rather uh, the information, the selected symbol requires an instance name, it's going to call it button number one. So here it is. So this is the link right now it's set up to take me to the Illustrator file. So I'll go ahead and change this to Gutenberg. And I'll get rid of this link in here. I'll get rid of, uh, I'll just type in the word new as a reference. So that way it'll always open to that particular banner. Here's my description that's been made into a comment. I don't need that anymore. And whoops, looks like I'm including two domains. Don't need the .com. My typo right there, should have seen that. Okay, we'll try it again. Okay, there we go, now we're in business. Okay, so let's come back over here and we want to fix our button now. And this button is one big giant button. We're gonna double click on it and go inside. Notice that I'm on the main timeline, scene number one. Now I'm double clicking. That takes me inside the button. The, the green box is on the first frame of the button I want this green box to be on the hit area. So I'm going to drag this to the very back and that'll take care of it. And now the button always goes on the highest layer just below the actions layer. So I'll go ahead and call this button. Okay. And now the last thing you may want to do, because the button is now somewhat hidden, uh, animate puts a blue tinge over the button so you know that it's there. And if you don't want to see it, just go ahead and hide the button. So now if we run this, it does a simple animation. We do a rollover. No matter where we go on the artwork, it's going to activate the button. We click on it. It takes us to our page. We can come back in here and click on it again. It just takes us to the same tab. If you want to see the animation again, just reload it and then you can launch it. And that's it. So it's working now. Now I want to save this. Let me close this off and I'll just do a save as. And I'll go to my desktop where I have my project folder and I'm going to save it there. And I'll just go ahead, even though it says FLA, I'll just go ahead and Kurt, uh, rather Vonnegut and uh, get rid of that vector, I don't need that. FLA, this is what you need to turn in. You need to turn in the FLA file as well as the Adobe Illustrator file. That way I can see how things were set up. So I'll go ahead and save that. And I'm done in here. I'll go to the desktop and clean up everything I need. Here's my project folder. So I'll just do a modify date. So skyline, don't need that one. This is the link to the book page. Don't need the PNG file. I want the Illustrator file. The, the vector one is the one I want. And uh, open this up a little bit. And the FLA file, that's the, that would be this one. So I don't need the recover one. So I'm just going to move those out of the way. Keep the Illustrator file there. So it'll just be these two files that I need. That way I can take a look and see how you've got your file set up. And uh, I can load up the FLA file. You don't have to generate it uh, with the HTML stuff. I don't need that there. And so then the next step would be to go to the project file and go ahead and compress it. And this is what you're going to be submitting uh, for the first phase of the banner project. I'm not asking you to do all three. I only want you to do one. And the reason for that is because we're going to be taking a look at other options in terms of how to animate the banners. Okay, thanks for your time.